Pygmalion and Galatea is the motif central to George Bernard Shaw's famed play, Pygmalion. The basis for Shaw's Pygmalion is a Greek myth retold by the ancient Roman poet Ovid in his masterwork, Metamorphosis. Young Pygmalion sees women as so inherently morally flawed that he rejects all thoughts of marriage and resolves to live alone. Nevertheless, he uses his great skill as a sculptor to carve out of ivory a woman so perfect that he falls in love with her. Sure enough, she is so beautifully fashioned that she seems to live and breathe, and as time passes, Pygmalion's adoration grows. One day, at the festival of Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, and sexuality, Pygmalion offers a prayer that he might be given a wife like his ivory virgin. The goddess hears and understands what the young man doesn't dare directly ask, that his creation may become his wife. Venus decides to grant the sculpture's wish. Upon returning home, he kisses the statue and finds that he is not touching cold ivory, but warm, yielding flesh. Venus has given life to the sculpture, and her name is Galatea. Like Pygmalion, Higgins becomes Eliza's creator, using the power of language to sculpt a lady from a draggle-tailed gutter snipe. Like the scores of American millionaires whom he is taught to speak, Eliza is nothing more than a block of wood from which he will carve a duchess. In the final stage of her transformation, a surge of passion brings Eliza to life, and she becomes aware that she is an independent being, separate from her creator and able to stand on her own. In the play's dramatic conclusion, Higgins is left behind in his mother's drawing room as Eliza sweeps out, no longer an immobile creature, but an individual able to make her own way. The creation has broken free of its creator. Shaw's ending is markedly different from Ovid's. In Shaw's Pygmalion, Higgins, unlike his ancient counterpart, does not get to keep his Galatea. In fact, he is exposed as foolishly misguided. In this way, Shaw seems to reject the Ovidian version. It's worth noting that Ovid also reveals an ironic attitude toward many of his characters. But Ovid doesn't make his disapproval nearly as explicit as George Bernard Shaw does. For Ovid, Pygmalion might be silly and rigid, but he gets exactly what he wants.